Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, for the month of June in the Mixed Media Emporium, we are looking at kind of small things and we're doing a different prompt for each week of the month. And this week, the prompt is artist trading cards and artist trading coins. So I'm just going to show you a quick selection of the things that I've pulled out to do artist trading cards with. So I've got some pre-cut cards, two and a half inches by three and a half inches, and I've just pulled things from my stash, but also things of interest that I've kind of squirreled away at different points. I've got maps. There's a wine label. It's still sticky on the front there, because that was the bit that was stuck to the bottle. And I've taken the back off it because it was very thick. There was a bit of another wine bottle. I just liked the pattern on the label and a few little bits and pieces with some interesting numbers. There was a ticket from an archaeological site in Turkey that I'd kept, a taxi ticket. Uh, so various things that I have just kept across the years. Uh, that bit of Italy, I liked the motorbike, the scooter I should say. Some stamps. I'm forever pulling stamps off envelopes. Most of those are just UK stamps, but I do have others from around the world, but just showing what I had to hand. Paint chips, brochures from hotels and whatnot, clippings from holiday brochures. That particular one there I'm going to use. And I also wanted some oriental text with it. So I downloaded some because I couldn't find this piece, which I did obviously find again later. It's the only piece of oriental text I've got, so I've photocopied it and I'm going to show you how I'm going to age it a bit. Now that original, that piece that I downloaded, my ink was running out so it's got lots of lines on it. But before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is put a coat of matte medium over the sticky things just so they'll be a bit easier to work with. This still had glue on the front. So I'm now going to age these things just so that it will be more in line with what I'm doing. I found that piece of packing tape. I'd obviously been pulling the old paint off my gel plate at some point and I'd just left that in there. So I'm just jumping ahead here because I had a nearly an hour and a half of footage so I've had to condense it and I've put it on faster but I'm just using this yellow I think it's iron oxide something like that just to age these just doing it on my gel plate but you know you could roll something out on a piece of paper then just put the piece down or just roll over it and it's just gonna take that whiteness off it because it was just too white now this piece that I downloaded from an image from unsplash.com. As I say, it's got those kind of lines on it because my ink's running out. Again, just going to put a coat of that on it in the hope that that will age it a bit. I'll still see those lines through it, but I'm just trying to make it a bit more uniform. So I can still see the lines a little bit, but it feels more usable now. So I'm now going to get started on my cards. And I've ended up with a bit of a theme that's kind of around the world. So this is an image I'd had for a while. I did try to take the back off it and you'll see I've torn the image a bit but you know that's okay it's still usable because if you've followed me for a while you know that I quite like things to have a kind of worn aged look. So this is a piece of Chinese money that my lovely friend Cynthia from Oregon sent me along with a whole load of other things. I'd often thought about trying to get some of that but I'd never got round to it so I was delighted when that turned up in a package from her. So I'm looking here at how these might fit in. That image because it was taken from a brochure you know it had that little bit out in the bottom left hand corner so I need to disguise that somehow. So I'm just looking at, could I take a piece from this Chinese money just to add in there? And the gold and the, the kind of red orange on the Chinese money just seem to fit in so well with this image. Now, I've left a lot of this in because it is my kind of thought process on bringing it together. So I thought that might be something that you might find of interest. 
If you're not interested in the kind of thought process behind it, you could obviously use the little gear icon and just put it on even faster if you wanted. So I'm just going to use my glue stick and I'm just going to get this piece down and onto the card because my image is quite thick as well. Part of it is because I didn't get all the backing off. I'm just putting a bit of the glue stick on both the card and that image. And I'm just placing it. Just a little bit of an overhang there. It's just I want to get most of the image of the two boys into it. Now I will say that with these cards, they, they've ended up, it's a bit of a kind of around the world theme. It's mainly collage that I'm doing, but I am using a bit of artistic, geographic, and cultural license in the cards that I'm, I'm doing. So just to kind of state that up, up front. So I've trimmed that off because it gives me a better idea of how the card's actually going to look. And just trying to get that down and into place. So again, looking at how this might fit on. And I can tell how much I'm, I'm going to need and I'm just going to cut a bit of that Chinese money out. And I really can't see how thrilled I was to, to get this and I'm really looking forward to, to using it in other projects. So I'm going to do that. It's already sticking down because I had glue there. So I'm just going to leave that more or less in place, although I will need to add a little bit more glue here and there. Now, as I rubbed that, it did lift some of the gold, but I was more than happy with that because I do want these to have, as I said, a distressed look. So just going to add some little bits of glue in here and there to get that fully down and into place. Now I did think, just jumping ahead a bit, I did think about putting some stamping on some of these cards, but by the time I'd finished them or, or got to where I did with them, I felt they were fine as is, but you could obviously add stamping or anything of that sort. So I'm thinking here about a bit of this text and you know, at the same time as I'm kind of cutting the text, I'm also looking back to my card and thinking, where would that fit? And I thought, well, it might actually go quite nicely over the kind of gold leaf of the Chinese money. But I'm going to cut a bit from this as well. This has obviously got a bigger text on it. And I'm going to cut a bit, bit of this and just look at how this will fit in. Sometimes when I'm working I will do things very quickly. I won't give them much thought at all. Just get on and get them down. But other times, I don't know, it may just depend on how I'm feeling. I will take a bit more time to look at placement and that kind of thing. And today was one of the days where I just spent a bit more time So just looking at, did I want the bigger text there? And you know with these things, there's no right or wrong reason, no right or wrong way to do it. Some of you might think, oh, that would look better there. Others will think differently. It's all about how you feel yourself about it when you're doing yours. But I do like that there. It just, for me, it felt in proportion. And so I'm going to put that in place. Now, I don't even know... I don't know what this says, so I hope it's nothing bad. Uh, and I don't even know if I put that on the right way up. So, no offence intended at all. As I say, artistic, geographic and cultural licence applied to all of this. I did want that additional kind of character on. And so I'm just going to put that in place. And again, I was just looking to where I felt it gave balance to the card. Now, the image was slightly torn, but as I say, that's that's fine because I want to actually distress it a bit. And what I'm going to do is just to take a piece of sandpaper and I'm just going to work gently over the image, just roughing it up a little bit here and there. 
and you'll see where the white is coming through. Now I will do something later on to tone the white down, but meantime I want to kind of leave it aside a bit just to make sure it's fully dry. Often when I'm working on more than one item, then I like to do that. I just like to uh, put a few things to the side and then do the finishing touches all at the same time. So this little thing, I, I, I just love it and it would look so good just on its own in a card. I remembered I had that bit and I th it kind of reminded me of the rocks at the bottom there of the image. I mean the image is really cleverly done because it's obviously just been an ordinary photo and they've painted in the building somehow. I, I just, I love it. As I say, it would be good as is, but I do want to change it up a bit. So looking at whether I can use that bit of packing tape that has the old paint on it. Looking at my other various bits of labels. Again, I've just left this in so I can kind of explain my thought process. And I get to the point where I think, right, I'm just going to stick the, the main image down and then I'll maybe have a better idea about what I want to add in and where. So my coat of matte medium on the top of this is, is dry now. And I'm just going to rub that down, making sure that I've got good contact between the two. Just using the bone folder there with the bit of greaseproof paper just to get that in place. And again, I'm just going to trim it off at this time Although there wasn't a lot of overhang on it, I just find that I get a better sense of the size and, and therefore the proportion of the things that I want to add into it. That really would have been nice, just left as is. I may have to buy a, another bottle of wine like that, just to make a little card as a little keepsake like that. So I'm going to cut a bit of this out, thinking I might add this in. At the moment it seems too stark for me against the that kind of bright blue sky. I look at it, change my mind, can't decide. Looking at my bit of label, do I want it on, don't I want it on? Looking at that bit of tape again, I like that because it's got that kind of worn look. But just can't decide. So at this point I go off to look at that stamp again and wonder if, you know, a stamp might look quite good on it. I then pull out the paint chips. I suppose at different points I was thinking could I mount something on top of something else. There was a little name from the, the, the wine bottle, the Diverso or Diverso, meaning different as far as I know. And just thinking, how could I use that? How could I use the stamp? Does the stamp fit? And just looking at how it all might sit together. I quite like the stamp on it, but I wasn't sold on it. I think maybe it was just the size of it against the buildings. I don't know. Then looking for a paint chip that was more or less the, the same colour as the blue of the sky. And thinking, could I mount the name onto the bit of paint chip and then add it. Now, I'm tearing away the edges there. I wanted to leave it kind of rough looking. I didn't want smooth lines on it. And I then thought, well, it would fit quite nicely on that piece of packing tape. As I say, the packing tape just reminded me a little bit of the rocks. So I just want a little bit and again I want it to be kind of uneven so I'm just putting a little snip into the tape and then just tearing it. The tape is kind of difficult to tear in that way. You've got to be careful or it ends up a big chunk coming off. So at this point I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to mount it on that piece of blue card. I decide to use a heavier glue because it is packing tape and therefore 
it's a kind of shiny surface. I shall cut this little bit out because I play with the glue for ages trying to get it out. And I'm just going to smooth that out with my finger and stick that down. Now just while I'm doing that I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that commented on my video from last week or gave the thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of you liked it, my little tea bag journal. And I'm glad so many of you enjoyed my little tea ceremony that I had during the course of the video. I'm on coffee today. So again, just looking at those little bits and pieces and how I might fit them in. And then I think I've got my map and it does happen to be a map of Italy, at least I'm pretty certain it is. So I just want a little piece of that. And you know, I was thinking these would make nice little, if you've, if you've been places and you have little things that you want to keep, you know, if you don't do a travel journal, then this would be quite a nice little way to do little reminders of places that you've been. Or if there are places that you haven't been, but you'd like to go, then, you know, why not make up cards? I haven't been to the Orient, for example. I've not been to China or Japan or anywhere in that kind of area of the world. As much as I'd love to go, I've never been. So quite nice to have the, the little card as a kind of on my travel wish list. So I'm looking at that and that blue backing card is just not doing it for me. So I take it off and I just put that directly down onto the card. And for me that then just fitted much better. I far preferred the look of that. So again I'm going to put that to the side. I do keep swithering bits and pieces here and there. See, I go back again. Will I add a bit? Won't I add a bit? And then I decide, no, nope, I'm going to leave it for the time being. I can always come back to it. So I decide to tidy up my desk a little bit there because I've had so much stuff on it. So I've got my ticket from Turkey and I, I didn't have anything else that I felt fitted in. So I've got this image here from... Petra in Jordan. So this is where I'm using a bit of geographic license. I guess you could look at this as much as being a kind of archaeological card as anything else. So I have been to Petra. It's an amazing sight to see, but that was actually from, I think, a holiday brochure of that particular image. So I'm looking at how these two might be brought together. And again, you know, I'm just kind of tearing bits off, folding them over, just kind of looking again at the kind of scale of things. I like that bit, it's almost like a kind of key on the card. So just going to take this down to size a bit. Taking off the white bits. Then I'm thinking, hmm, could I use a bit of this previous jelly plated image? So that if there's any white bits on the card, this will kind of cover those up beforehand. But I'm, I know at this point that if I put that down, I might actually end up covering it all over and, and that's fine. So for me, the kind of gold colour and the sort of blue turquoise just kind of seem to fit with the pieces of sort of ephemera that I was going to be using. Again, just making sure that that's right down and in place. And I'll just cut round that. And all those little scraps will be saved and used for something else.
trying to get better at wiping my scissors off as I haven't always been very good at that in the past. So looking at that, decide I want to lose a bit of that sky. And then I think, hmm, could I use a piece of that packing tape with the old bits of paint on it again? So again, this is very much just about my thought process. At this point, I'm thinking I don't want to include some of the bits that were on the ticket that made this look just like Turkey because the other image wasn't from Turkey and Oh, I don't know, just one of those things that I felt would have been wrong. They're, they're really, I don't know why I was thinking that, but I just felt, no, I don't want it. I liked the little kind of holograph image and felt that I wanted to keep that in, but it, it wasn't working for me there at that point in time. But this is where the thought process and these little bits and pieces, you know, sometimes discard them, sometimes come back to them. Tearing off more of the sky there, tearing off the grass at the bottom, because again, they just weren't working for me in the card. And it really is quite... I don't know, not strange, but it's funny how the, the artistic mind works at times that sometimes the smallest things can can be the things that kind of bother and just got to get them right, and that's okay. So I'm liking the look of that in the back there, but then my little bit of light blue's kind of not feeling right. So I'm now thinking, can I somehow cover up that whole gap there? And again, just because it's got lots of little tiny paint flakes on it, it just has that kind of old aged look because the way these cards have worked out, they've all got kind of old buildings or an old feel in them. You know, the one with the two boys, they're obviously in a temple. The Italian buildings are old. And here, Petra and this archaeological site in Turkey are very old. And, and that's part of the reason I wanted to get this kind of aged look to them as well. And this piece of tape with the old bits of paint chip on them just gives it that kind of aged effect as well. So, again, that's just part of my thought process. I don't know when I'm working on them that I'm always consciously thinking about that. I think a lot of that's going on in, in my kind of subconscious brain. But I, I hope that me telling you about my kind of process and my thought process helps in some small way. So if you're doing cards this week uh, and you just decide to do something similar, you know, don't feel that you've got to do a kind of travel theme or anything of that sort, I guess what I'm saying is try and just use what you've got. Whether it's things from your stash or things from old magazines, just things that interest you. So I cut down that piece a bit further because it, it felt too dominant otherwise. And that piece is now just going to fit across the top. Looking again at my little holograph and whether it will fit in. And again, just going to burnish that down, make sure that's fully adhered, especially since there's several layers on there now. And I'm going to edge, uh, age it a little bit. So just using my bit of sandpaper just to, to rough up those images a bit. I'm sorry, there's my lockdown here coming into 
screen there I badly need to get my hair cut it has gone wild during lockdown but I know I'm not alone so I won't worry about it so back to the holograph looking again at that I'm going to trim round it thinking it might look a bit better if I just cut that out and I just can't decide yes no yes no just about to glue it down and then I change my mind and that's the way it goes so I'm looking at all the three cards there deciding now that the one from Italy needs to be aged a little bit. This one's a little bit more difficult to do because I do have that layer of matte medium on it. So it's not going to scrape in the same way. And it was also, I think the card already had a kind of coating on it. But I'll find other ways to age it. Now I'm looking at this one and thinking I need a bit of text of some description on it. And I go off to look through and see if I had, I thought maybe even a hieroglyph or something, couldn't find it. So I've got this other image of Petra and I'm just going to cut the word Petra and Jordan out, although I do then cut it down a little bit further. I had decided that I would use the words from the card from Turkey, but because it wasn't all Turkey, I, I felt that I needed to stick the little bit about Petra down so I'm just going to cut round that too and I'm going to add both of these to the card again playing about with where they would go I really was being quite pernickety today, cutting the smallest shaving off the, the edges there. So if you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium and you would like to join, then I will leave a link to the group below. Now just to let you know that when you hit the join button, there are some questions that you need to answer. We do require members to answer those questions. They're not difficult, they're very straightforward. If you don't see the questions, then do let either myself or Nina know. They, they, they should show up. The problem is we can't approve anybody to join the group unless they've, they've answered those questions. It's just a requirement. So any difficulty with that, then do please let us know. And of course, Nina also has a video this week, so I'll leave a link to that below as well. So I've come back to that little bit of the kind of other bit of the, the wine label and I think I want to add that because there was just too much blue sky there. I love blue sky but for the card I just felt that it needed to be, it, it just needed something else. So I'm just going to add that on. It's feeling a bit too bright and white just now but in a moment I'll show you how that I'm going to just knock the colour of that back a bit. Again, just taking off those little bits of overhang. And by this point, I'm liking the way that they're, they're starting to look. And yes, I, I'm still picking bits up and putting them down and thinking, will I, won't I? That's just the way it goes. So I'm now going to just do a little bit of a kind of finishing touch. I've got this, I think it's the Blue Jeans Distress Ink. Don't know where my tool for those bits are but I just use the, the little ends anyway and just colouring the little bit of the decorative edge and a little bit of the map just to blend it in that little bit more. I'm now also going to take this gold and I'm going to go over all the cards a little bit so where there's the kind of white 
on that card and the kind of archaeological one where I've really kind of roughed them up. I want that to be more aged looking. I start using the little pad but then just go to my fingers and, and use those instead. And you'll just see it. It's difficult to see on camera but it does start to take on a bit of that colour. I add it to this as well because there is the gold in there. So again I just think that will add it. And it, it really helped that sky out for me because that was just too bright. And again over the last card as well. And it's sometimes these tiny things that just help bring the cards together at the end. There I am just going over the, the white labels on them just with the words. Just keep playing with it until it's at that point where I think that's fine. Now I'm just going to take some black stays on and I'm going to go right round the cards. And you'll see that on the corners I'm putting some extra pieces on. Some extra ink. I just It's just about framing the card. And again, a lot of that kind of thing is very much down to, to personal preference. Still a bit of glue underneath that tape there, so just kind of squeezing that out a little bit. And to me it's amazing how much just that little bit of black ink around the edges just helps finish the cards off. Then the final one, again getting it right onto those corners there. Just helps give that aged and worn look. So I'll just show you them against a slightly more tidy background, although I need to change that as well, I think. So my three cards, one from the Orient, one from kind of archaeological sites, and the other one kind of representing Italy. And I'm really pleased the way these have come together. As I say, if, if you're going to do something like this, don't feel that you've got to do things from around the world. Just use what, what you have. And uh, I think you can get a lot of enjoyment from that. But, you know, you can source images from online, from brochures, from magazines, or use old tickets. What, whatever you've got. So, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've enjoyed hearing about my process for creating them. So, as always, here's a few images. And uh, I hope you'll join me again next time. But meantime, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Bye for now.